Today, I am here with uh, Mike Brooks. Mike is the author of Power Phone Scripts, one of my favorite books on sales. Mike, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. It's good to talk to you. Absolutely. So let me start with this. Uh, Power Phone Scripts is a book that I've sent to probably 100 to 150 different uh, clients, prospective clients, friends. I'm a big fan of this book. Uh, Mike, if you want to take maybe 30, 60 seconds, give us an overview of what the book is about and why uh, it will have a, a good impact on a business. Sure. Yes, certainly. You know, I think what separates Power Phone Scripts from other books on sales and especially other books on inside sales is that I don't just tell you what you should say and I tell you exactly what to say. So in other words, the situations that we run into over and over again, the objections, the blow-offs, the stalls, I'm not interested, just email me something, we've already got a vendor, we don't need that, Any those recurring selling situations you run into. The question is, what do you say? What do you say that's going to be current, that's going to be effective, that is going to help you bypass or get around that objection? So what Power Phone Scripts gives you are literally word-for-word -word scripting that you can adapt and adjust to your personality, but I'll tell you exactly what to say in those situations, and I'll give you multiple things to say, in fact, over 500 different scripts. So again, this is not a theoretical book on sales. This is a practical book that you can use immediately to get past gatekeepers, to earn the right to have conversations with decision makers, to find out who the decision makers are, and then to qualify prospects. So that's really what makes it, I think, different than most of the books on sales out there. Got it. And that's why I love it. So um, without going into, without being too much of a fanboy, um, I, this book was an eye opener for me because I thought for years that sales was very much uh, being charismatic, um, you know, just putting on the charm and doing that. Um, I didn't real, realize how much of sales was formulaic. And this book was eye opening uh, for me for that. So I want to say thank you for that, number one. Um, number two, can you give me an idea of when you realized it was formulaic, when you when it took you from being, you know, just someone that had a gift for a gab to being like, oh, my God, I'm only getting the same questions, the same five or ten questions. I really should script out how to answer these. What Take me back to when you were newer in sales, when you figured out the, um, you know, the, the real truth behind how sales actually works. Yes, that's a great question, and I really like when you talk about, hey, having the gift of gab, and, you know, it's really about a personality-based thing. Other people say, hey, you know, you know, I have to be genuine with someone. I can't come across like a robot, and, in fact, sales are consultative. Everyone's different. I need to be able to, you know, to, to chuck and jive, and I need to be able to, you know... <laughs> Yes and no, right? So the truth is this. You mentioned it here. And I like to say, and I, I talk about this in Power Phone Scripts, uh, there are 10 characteristics of sales professionals. And I, I preface all of sales by saying there is a secret to being successful in sales. And there is, and you hinted to it. And what it is is 80 to 90% of the situations you run into are the same over and over again. So why not script out the most effective, best practice wording, messaging that you can use to deal with those recurring selling situations? And that's why scripts are so important. But I want to get answer your original question. When did I figure this out? Early in my sales career, when did I when did I realize that ad libbing and making it up as I go along and wheeling and dealing and trying to use my charm wasn't really the best, more most effective approach? And it was when I was struggling. And I was looking at the top three producers. I was in a uh, an office of 25 sales reps. We were financial investment reps making hundreds of cold calls a day. And there were three top producers. And one of them 
drove a beautiful Porsche Carrera, and I drove an old beat up Nissan hatchback. And I, and he'd walk in with his thousand dollar suits, and I had, you know, my certainly wasn't wearing that. And I, and I asked myself, what is he doing that I'm not doing? And I literally recorded him. I snuck next to his cubicle and I put my tape recorder up and I recorded him making cold calls. I recorded him making closes and I came back one weekend and I transcribed them all. And I compared what he was saying and there was a giant difference between what he was saying and what I was saying. Number one, what he was saying was very spot on. It was very pointed and it addressed all the situations in, again, a best practice approach. And the second thing is he said it over and over again. He didn't deviate. And when I compared that to what I was doing, and again, I was making it up as I went along. I was trying to play off people's personalities. I was trying to come up with the the response du jour of the day. I failed miserably. It was hard. And I was not only not effective, but I was exhausted by lunch. Because I was trying to reinvent the wheel on every call. Bottom line, guess what? There is a formula. There is a best practice approach. The responses, the objections, the blow-offs you get, got news for you, they're all the same. When do they differ? There's probably about seven, eight objections you get. Well, again, why not script out the most effective proven responses to them and then concentrate on learning them internalizing them so you can deliver them like a like an academy award winning actor if you do that your days will go by faster you'll be much more effective you won't be as tired at the end of the day and bottom line you'll make a lot more sales and have more fun period i like that i like that you brought the analogy of 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 an actor following a script they internalize it same with like Michael Jordan, for example, um, you know, him hitting that, that game winning three, uh, was something he internalized and practiced probably hundreds of thousands of times prior or throughout his life. It wasn't something that he just made up on the spot. It was, oh. uh, you know, fine tuning over the years. Uh, what do you say to, what do you, what do you say to people that say, uh, that they shouldn't use scripts or that scripts are not being authentic or, or something along those lines? Very simple. My answer has been this way for a long time. You know what? You're already using a script. Mm -hmm. You're already using one. In fact, why don't you record yourself over a week and transcribe out everything you say? And if I were to take that and hand that back to you, what would you call it? It's a script. You're already saying the same things or variations of things over and over again. Chances are, and this is what I find with all the clients I work with, chances are what they're saying isn't very effective. It isn't a best practice approach. In fact, and this is a true story. Right before, Ed, you and I had this conversation, I'm on the phone with a client. It's an hour call. We've got four or five of their sales reps there. And they, from one of them finally gets a prospect on the phone, and he says, um, hey, did, you know, do you happen to have anything we can help you with? Well, there's a perfect example of an ineffective approach. What type of question is that? That's a closed-ended question. What kind of answer do you give? Yes, no. Do you have anything we can help you with? No. Or well, the conversation is now over. You just set yourself up for that. Why not script out a better practice approach? Hey, what do you have on your whiteboard coming up in the next two to three months or even the next week that I can help you with? What have we done? We've now asked an assumptive question. Did I sound scripted? No, I didn't. Did I ask a better question? Yes, I did. Why? Because I scripted it out. So if you tell me you don't want to use a script, I'll tell you you're already using one. Why not take the time to write out a better practice approach to really standardize your messaging so you can deliver a best practice approach each time you have a conversation. Right. I like that. Um, from the time someone sits down and writes out all of the scripts, and they don't need to write out everything day one, um, it, it, it go with the 80-20 approach, script out you know the bulk of what you get to start with, and then add stuff over time. But with that, with that core uh, group of scripting, once once someone has that in hand and starts practicing with it, how long uh, do you find it takes someone to internalize all of the scripting so that it doesn't sound like they're reading off a piece of paper? 
It depends on, that's a good question again, it depends on how much work you're willing to put in. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I always say, hey, do you know the words to the song Stairway to Heaven? Oh, sure I do. There's a lady who sure all the glitter. You get the idea, right? (laughs) We all know the words to that song. Why? Because we've heard it a hundred times. And so why not take your scripts and take out your cell phone like I'm holding in my hand right now, turn on the microphone uh, function, and record those scripts in your best Academy Award winning voice in the inflection that you want and then listen to that 30, 40, 50 times you're walking the dog, you're working out listen to that if you do that you're going to learn your scripts much quicker and then if you also have them in front of you and then you start using them on each and every call you can learn all these scripts in in two weeks three weeks most Yeah, I think scripts get a bad rap from, from shitty telemarketers that are calling from from overseas that are just hitting you you know i think that's where it gets a bad name from is that kind of what you're thinking as well I, yeah it is and you know let's face it you know um, people who are not working on commission or don't have a commission component uh people who but, but yeah, here's here's the difference what you're talking about you're right those are call centers mm-hmm. and when you think about a call center there are two three hundred people right and they're they're in tiny cubicles and they're they're made to follow a script and they do sound scripted and they do sound like a hello is that mr johnson i mean you know, you're not going to call anybody mr and mrs anyway so yeah they do however a, a top professional again regardless of if you think you should follow script or not got news for you you already are you're already saying the same things or variations on them and chances are again they're probably not the most effective technique. So script it out, internalize it, personalize it, make it your own, and then deliver it like an actor in a in a, a free flowing, consultative, natural, unscripted way. I guarantee you everything I say when I'm on the phone does not sound scripted, but all of it is. It's just internalized and well practiced. Got it. Got it. Okay. Is there um is there a, an eighty twenty approach on what I should be focused on when it comes to scripts or internalizing the scripts or just scripts in general? Like, is there something is there something I should focus on more than than other parts of it? You know, you, you, not necessarily. However, I would say the things that you're going to find yourself answering the most, uh, getting around the gatekeeper, asking uh, assumptive questions, dealing with your most uh, I would say with, with the objections that you get most often, they hey, just email me something, right? Yep. That's you know the the answer to that isn't uh, okay. What's your email? All right, great, I'll shoot something off to you and call you in a couple of weeks. And believe it or not, that's what eighty percent of salespeople say. That's their yep. answer. Right. Well, how how about a better approach? How about just email me something? I'll be happy to do so. Uh, you know. I, we've got a couple of brochures here I can see. Let me just ask you a, a couple quick questions to make sure I send you the best one. How are you currently handling X, Y, Z? So you know, there's a best practice approach. Yeah, that's scripted comes right from my book. Does that, right. does it, did that sound scripted? I hope not. No, it didn't. And, and uh, I, I, I love that. Most people, most people wave their hand in victory that, that someone was willing to accept uh, an email of information when the reality is it's just a blow off. It's to get them off the phone. So if you challenge that, I think it's very effective. And, and, and even if it's to challenge it and get a no, that's okay. Then you don't waste your time following up with that person. Yeah, big time. And then, you know, here's, and let, let, let's stick with that train and, and, the, the, and then they follow that bad technique up when they call that person back back two weeks later. Believe it or not, I still hear it today. They call them back and say, "Oh yeah, it's me. Uh, uh, did you read that email I sent you?" Um, I mean, right. no. <laughs> and right. who are you? And I got to go now. Right. Uh, so there are much better. Again, there's a there's an eighty uh, percent situation that we get into all the time calling people back. Why not ace it? Why not come up with a better practice approach? Got it. Got it. Okay. Of all your time consulting and training on this, um, is there a uh, percentage of improvement someone could expect from implementing a 
a proper phone script program into their business or, or even themselves as an individual selling within a business? Yes, there are, there are, and and you know I had a, I worked with a company a couple of years ago, and they were they're up in Canada, London, Canada, and they they were already doing well. They had won an award for being the the, the fastest growing business, and they thought they they had it going on. They had three managers, a VP of sales, and I think there were about twelve, fifteen people under each manager, so they weren't they weren't huge, but they weren't small. And they they flew me up, and I I listened to all of their calls ahead of time. I scripted out their entire sales process. I went up and delivered the training, used recordings that they had to, to show them what they were doing wrong, how they could do it better. Within 45 days, they had a 33% increase in sales because they followed the scripts and they refined their messaging and they used a better practice approach. So that is one example. And on an individual basis, you know, my mentor was Stan Ballou and he said, hey, if you want to double your income in 90 days, do one thing. And that is to record yourself, listen to your phone calls every single day, every day for 90 days and make improvements in the areas that you find, and you'll double your income in 90 days. I did that all those years ago, and I tripled my income in 90 wow. days by doing that. So it you know, it comes down to the same thing. Uh, as a consultant, as a trainer, how much better are people going to get? It's like life, whatever you put in. So if you're really dedicated to scripting, if you're really dedicated to training, to following a best practice approach, to recording and listening to your calls, sky's the limit. You can make amazing, amazing progress. And if you don't, it's like they say, if nothing changes, well, nothing changes. Right, right. Okay. And uh, if you had to look, I know the 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 real answer is every part of the sales process, but if you had to pick one part of the sales process where having a script would have the most impact? Is it in prospecting? Is it in qualifying? Is it in uh, going for a close? Um, where where do you see it having the biggest impact if you had to identify just one area? I know the answer is the entire sales process, but if you had to break down to one, what would it be? If I had to break it down to one, and it's very hard to do, I would say it would be during the demo and the presentation stage where, where scripting is so important to be able to get buy-in throughout the process to do check-ins, use tie-downs, use trial closes. I would say that has the, the, the most impact. However, <laughs> you can't close an unqualified lead. Sure. So the qualifying process is still is still so, so very important. Uh, because again, if I don't have a qualified lead, doesn't matter how good my product or services or the presentation is. There, if they're not qualified, they're not buying. If I don't understand the buying motives, then I can't speak to them. So, but again, if you if you have to nail me down, I'm going to tell you on the close. On the close, got it. Okay. Yeah. All right. Coming down to the last four questions. What was four. the All right. last four? Oh, my, my final four. Go ahead. <laughs> Rapid succession. What was the last book that you read? The last book on sales or the last book in the world? Uh, both. Um, you know, it's actually, I'll, I'll, I'll tell you what it is. It's, um, it's kind of on both, although it's not really pointed toward that. It's called Leadership, and it's by Doris um, Goodwin Kearns, and she's a she's a Pulitzer Prize winning historian, and she just released a book this year called Leadership, and it's the traits of leadership. It's a fabulous book. That's the last book I I read. Awesome, very cool. And what's your favorite book? Well, my favorite book this year so far is The Floor of Heaven by Howard Blum, B L U M. Fabulous book, great story. Okay. And um, if you could go back in time and talk to your 20-year-old self, what advice would you give yourself? Don't worry. Stop worrying. Everything's going to be great. Second piece of advice, save your money. Save your money. Got it. I, you know, I thought it would have been script your sales process sooner. Yeah, it, 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 it could have been, but I would have gotten around to the scripting Anyway, and if I could have held on to at least half the money I'd have made, then I would be in Bermuda right now. But <laughs> <laughs> All 
Um, last question is, what's the best advice you ever got and who gave it to you? The best advice I ever got was from Stan Ballou, who said, uh, record your phone calls and listen to them in 90 days. And I did that. And as I said, I tripled my sales. That's I've been given a lot of great advice, but if I were to tell you one, I would say that was it. Now, one last caveat with that. He gave that advice to a room of about 100 people. Mm-hmm. Probably only two people took it. Took it. Got it. Got it. Okay. Mike, how do people get a hold of you? Well, the best thing to do is go to my website, which is mrinsidesales.com. That's mrinsidesales.com. If you like any of the tips or the things you've heard today, sign up for my blog every week, every Tuesday. You'll get either scripting or great, great advice all for free. And then, of course, if you're interested, I know you mentioned my latest book, Power Phone Scripts. You can get that on Amazon or my website. It's a great, great start. And then I've also got some, I've got a really, if you've got a team, I've got a fabulous training program on demand, seven week, that will take you from cold to close and it'll help you double or even triple your sales. Awesome. Well, thank you very much, Mike. This has been great. I'm a, I'm a big fan of your book. Uh, again, I, I give it out quite often to, to friends and colleagues and prospective clients. Uh, just because I think it's so effective. When I when I deal with a business where I, I think sales might be uh, a problem that they're having, I say go to this book and look up where you need it. So if it's in the qualifying, if it's in the appointment setting stage, if it's in um, the, the the demo stage, the close. I mean, th- there's so many good examples in here that uh, we've implemented in our business. So I'm just a, a raving fan. Really happy to have you on today. Thank you for thank you for taking your time to to be with us. Um, thank you very much. I had a great time today. Well, thanks, Ed. And again, thanks for having me on the show. And everyone out there, you can do a lot better than you're doing now with a lot less effort and even have fun at it if you just take the time to prepare yourself for the recurring selling situations you get into over and over again. Awesome. Great advice. Thank you very much, Mike. Have a great day. You as well, Ed. Thank you again. Thanks. Bye. Bye.